Creme 2 News begins now. Thank you for joining us on Creme 2 Plus. I'm Tim Pham. This is your Creme 2 News Week in Review. Join us as we take a closer look at some of the biggest stories in the Inland Northwest this past week. At Platinum Mechanical in the Valley. <laughs> it's nonstop. Phones keep ringing. Co-owner Jeff Hatcher's playing dispatcher for calls that have carried on. Everything's frozen. From a frigid weekend, mostly for frozen pipes. Well, we had we had about 350 calls over the weekend. Typically on a weekend, you may get a couple calls. This is what Denise Brooks's family found Saturday morning. No running water downstairs and no hot water upstairs. We got cold water, no problem. But as soon as you turn it to the hot, nothing. Denise tried heat tape and some and other nothing. tactics. And they tried so. to come out and defrost it, but as soon as they took the heat gun off of it, it immediately froze back up. But she's had to wait days. Yeah, it's not been fun. Um, the kids haven't been able to take a, a bath or a shower. Um, we can't do laundry, um, we can't, you know, obviously we can't take showers, we can't run the dishwasher. As others across the region experience an even worse situation. Sasha Hunter shared these videos after an upstairs neighbor's unit flooded. It's all hands on deck for platinum. You can see it's just, it's just back to back to back all the way across and that goes all the way up until almost 11 p.m. With burst pipes, flooding, and some homes with no heat. Yeah, unbelievable. I mean, it's just since basically Friday afternoon up through right now, it's just been nonstop. So Denise will wait a couple more hours, knowing it could be so much worse. At least I have some water, you yeah. know, so. Shannon Mowdy. Not that I wanted to not have a shower last night, but. Creme 2 um, News. Well, you can see the damage before you even step inside heat praxia here in downtown Coeur d'Alene. Let me show you. We have these iced over frozen mats and some water damage on the windows, but it's what's behind these doors that may mean this business is shut down for some time. Old plunge culture to it was an escape ago, from reality. You know, you have the, uh, the misfortune of something like this happening. But so. Tuesday, as Joe Cruz opens up Coeur d'Alene's heat praxia, realities hitting hard. All right. This is how the two-year-old business looks after a pipe burst Saturday. Well, yeah, walk, <laughs> walking up, it looked like a steam room. Uh, it was hot water actually coming down. And so, yeah, when you walked in, it was just like, it was just, you know, like you're at a water park. Water just pouring down like a shower. Taking the healing heat of the saunas into a cold plunge. Other shops in the historic downtown Coeur d'Alene building also had damage, but Cruz says heat praxia took the brunt. Getting ready to grow and scale and um, overnight it's all kind of taken away and set us uh, a lot of steps backwards. So. And now this small business's future is foggy. Some clients are still paying on their accounts, Cruz says, in hopes the shop will remodel or rebuild elsewhere. They're waiting to see what insurance could cover, but the reality is a ceiling to floor fix that may mean a long break. Um, it's only a couple of days fresh, but yeah, it's definitely painful. Serving a community that needs this type of natural wellness and to just have it strip away is like, <laughs> totally sucks, yeah. it totally sucks, so. And we will have a link to Heat Praxia's Instagram account at creme.com. That's where they're going to keep their customers updated on their progress and what's going on, as well as provide some information on how you can help them. In Coeur d'Alene, Shannon Mowdy, Creme 2 News. I'm outside Bulldog's famous barbecue and brews and the kitchen manager here has been waiting for the roads to be plowed all day long. And just within this evening, the city plows have come through this neighborhood and now the roads look like this. The snow is far from melting. We want them to get here safe. Bulldog's famous barbecue and brews in the Hilliard district has seen their fair share of snow. Wes Taylor is a restaurant's kitchen manager. It's in an area that city plows scarcely get to. I think the city should do, um, with the resources they have, they could do a lot more. Taylor's restaurant is the only food business in the neighborhood. He says business is slow now, but he hopes with the plowed roads, people can get to the restaurant safely. It definitely helps 
business as far as getting people in here and and they're not worried about trying to find the place with the bad roads. The city announced their full city plow Wednesday afternoon. The approach to every storm is different. Kirsten Davis with the city of Spokane says that each time the city does a full city plow, it's never the same. Crews change the order of routes they travel depending on which neighborhoods were hit the worst. We try not to have, you know, one neighborhood always be first or one neighborhood always be last. We really try to um, swap it out a little bit so that we're sharing that um, around the area. As city plows begin to make their way through the hillier neighborhood, thanks to a loyal customer, the parking lot outside Bulldog's famous barbecue and brews was already plowed. It makes it easier for people to come in to see us. When Taylor pulled up to work this morning, everything was taken care of and I knew I didn't have to do that extra throwing on the jacket and going outside. It was a happy surprise. And as Kirsten Davis talked about, if your neighborhood hasn't been plowed yet, don't worry. A plow should be coming within the next day or two. In Spokane, Nathan Hun, Krem 2 News. Because you can't see nothing. Eli Jerkins' trip to pick up his second grader. It's like kind of snow mixed with rain. It was made trickier by Wednesday's pummeling of powder. The weather is pretty crazy, so it was a little tough to get in here. By the mid-afternoon pickup, the snow hadn't let up, leading to tough travel. About 10 to 12 minutes uh, without traffic, but right now, because of this weather, the traffic is pretty insane, so it took me 40 minutes. Spokane Public Schools Superintendent Adam Swinyard says when the district made the pre-dawn decision to not cancel classes, safety was one factor taken into account. And that includes uh, you know, when the accumulation is going to start, how much is going to accumulate uh, and the extent to which the city and county are prepared. Another reason to not cancel what school can mean for hundreds of students. A number of kids that rely on Spokane Public Schools for breakfast and lunch and meals uh, in addition to having a warm place to go. And not every parent or guardian gets a snow day from work, Swinyard adds. So calling off school can put some families in an even tougher situation. It's why absences were excused. And we know that with every snow decision, um, you know, we have stakeholders that uh, maybe wish there would have been uh, a snow day. Yep. <laughs> an option Chirkin may take advantage of. If it's going to be the same as today, most likely uh, I don't see the point to take my kid, risking and taking my kid down to school. This snow in North Idaho is not playing around. The Rathdrum Skate Park is empty if you don't count the several inches of snow on the ramps. And those who are braving the weather, too much ice built up on the highway. Well, they aren't too phased by it. Oh, it's just January. Driving Highway 41 from Rathdrum to Coeur d'Alene, the roads got a bit slick and visibility was poor in some spots. In downtown Coeur d'Alene, it's all hands on deck to clear the sidewalks and the roads. At this local bakery, Frank Piggott says his usual customers came in this morning, no problem. But this afternoon, customers didn't stick around as long. We had a lot more to-go orders going out today. He says some came in on foot. This is a town that people get out and they're not afraid to walk around a little bit. Come this way. That includes Joan Woodard, who braved the snow to get Gemma's daily walk-in. I feel nice and toasty. Well, she's quite well insulated. Oh, this was just around the block because I have to go to a meeting this afternoon, so I needed to get her out before I left her at home by herself. Pet dog. Yes. Joan says she worries about other people's driving in these conditions, and that's why she's choosing to walk a couple blocks to work instead. I try to go everywhere. I don't I don't want to like just go to one area. I try to go everywhere because they're everywhere. Roy Garcia is not driving for Uber, but tonight he's picking up strangers. Cold out here, aren't you? You guys you got a bed at a shelter? The Salvation Army runs two of these street level vans 24 hours a day, looking for homeless men and women, offering them rides to safer, warmer places. And it doesn't even have to be a Salvation Army shelter. There are even some folks that we're taking to their, their family members, just making sure that they're safe and in a place where they, they won't freeze to death. Anywhere that there is homeless people, I will go. Sometimes that means Cheney or Airway Heights. Families, I'll, I'll pick up a, a father and a son I picked up just recently. And I'm like, you guys are father and son? He's like, yeah, we have nowhere to go. We're freezing out here by ourselves. They were sleeping in their car, but the car windows were broke. So I took them to Trent Shelter and they're there still. 
Roy says the hardest part of his job is leaving people who refuse help. He spends a lot of time convincing them and building relationships. That simple hand warmers go a long way out here. He stopped to help this woman near second end division. Well, if you want to go to a shelter, I can give you right to the trench shelter if you like. She took some hand warmers but wouldn't let Roy take her to his shelter. Let's go somewhere else. We'll go another side to the gas to the car wash over here. Just around the corner. You guys want to ride right now? If you guys want to get in with us, I'll give you guys a ride. This group took Roy up on his offer. Jump on in, guys. A short drive to the cannon shelter means they won't be spending the night outside in the freezing cold. I love helping them. That's why I do what I do, because I'm out here because I care. I don't want them freezing. In Spokane, Kyle Simchuk, Krem 2 News. Yeah, you know. Oh, well, yeah, you should have seen it because there were thousands and thousands of people out here marching the streets. They didn't care about the cold weather. And I mean, when I say it was cold, it was cold. You all know it. I mean, it's been freezing the last few days, but they had the smiles on their face. They were bundled up. Some people were even singing as they took the streets of Spokane. It really was a sight to see. And on top of that marching rally, there was also a resource fair here today as well. So truly a lot of great events happening to celebrate and honor the life of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. We had a chance to be out here with them as well. I mean, hugging people, kissing babies, things of that nature. I want you to go ahead and take a listen really quick at some of those early moments because you can hear some of the drums, but we also got a chance to speak with some of those people who are marching. They're using their voices to come together in the face of racism and injustice, and I think that's really powerful. The message for the day was not a day off, but a day on, because of course a lot of people didn't have to go to work today, but many of them chose to come out here to gather with the community and represent that unity and honor Dr. King's life and what he used to preach. So lots of more events throughout the week. You can also find those on crim.com and the crim2 app to see what else is planned to honor Dr. King. But for now, reporting in downtown Spokane, Brandon T. Jones, Crim2 News. Despite an effort by voters, former President Donald Trump's name will appear on the state's presidential primary ballot come March. School teacher Frankie Ithaca, alongside seven other voters, argued Trump's presence on the ballot violates the 14th Amendment, which bars any person who engaged in an insurrection from seeking public office. You can't take away a vote from somebody when the vote is illegal under the rule of law. And if we are not a nation that adheres to the Constitution, then we have nothing to stand on. Similar challenges have been made by states across the country, a case the U.S. Supreme Court is expected to hear next month. Thursday's ruling did not consider the president's eligibility, rather the state's electoral process. As a result, the court is denying the request of the petitioner electors to take any action that would direct Secretary of State to remove former President Donald J. Trump's name from presidential primary ballots. A move the state Republican Party is praising. It's our position that it's the voters who need to make these decisions, not a handful of radical activists. And I'm very happy, I'm very encouraged that the court agreed and, uh, and put aside this, uh, this silly attack and, and is leaving it to the voters to make the decision about who they want for president. As part of that challenge by voters, the judge was asked to weigh in on Washington State's primary election ballots. The judge declined to do so, saying it would be premature and that the case is not legally ripe at this time, leaving the door open for possible future litigation. In Seattle, Sebastian Robertson, Krem 2 News. Well, the proposed law, if passed, would target those repeat property crime offenders. That's people doing things like stealing cars and committing retail theft. Entropy Records in downtown Spokane was hit this morning, literally in what the owner believes was an attempted theft. Things are on the move at Entropy Records, including owner J.J. Wandler. Yeah. And thousands of dollars in music we, memorabilia. Uh, in our window, we had this vintage Gibson uh, uh, hollow body electric guitar. Moved to a less conspicuous corner, more out of sight for opportunistic thieves. Wandler's store was hit pre-dawn Thursday. 
they hammered at it with a rock uh, or multiple rocks. Luckily, the reinforced glass and security alarms stopped an actual smash and grab. A police officer recovered the rock which Wandler's keeping. I said that it was shocking that somebody could find a rock under all this snow right now. And he said that what they've noticed is that um, some of these dishonest folks that are out breaking windows carry the rocks with them. It's why Senator Mike Patton of Spokane Valley is pushing for tougher penalties. Uh, we have a, uh, a, a real crisis in the explosion of property crimes. A bill he co-sponsored just passed the Senate Wednesday. It would allow prosecutors to seek up to two extra years on sentences for habitual property crime offenders. And you take them out of the picture, the property crime rate is going to go down substantially. From, from what I understand from law enforcement, there are a relatively few number of people that commit a lot of crimes in this area. Wandler says property crime is a cost of business downtown, but he's not so sure longer jail time will help. These are crimes of opportunity. I don't think that anybody who's doing this type of stuff is is really thinking that far ahead on to, you know, how much time they'd be looking at. He's in favor of more drug treatment, which he believes is a common factor in these crimes. So for now, he's rearranging more merchandise. I figure that the guy who threw it must have a pretty good arm. And keeping his sense of humor about it all. And the bill passed the state Senate on Wednesday in a 38 to 10 vote. It now heads to the House. Shannon Mowdy, Crumb 2 News. It looks like Washington voters may decide the fate of the state's cap and invest program. The Secretary of State says an initiative that would ban such programs has enough signatures to qualify for the November ballot. I have been reporting on the impacts of the Climate Commitment Act for more than a year now. The program charges polluters in the state in an attempt to reduce carbon emissions. Carbon auctions raised $1.8 billion last year in Washington. However, critics say consumers end up footing the bill as oil companies pass on the extra cost to drivers at the pump. When I interviewed the implementation manager for the CCA back in November, he said they estimate the law has driven up gas prices roughly 25 to 27 cents per gallon. However, experts I spoke with think the impact is even greater, possibly as much as 40 cents a gallon. Last week, Governor Jay Inslee defended the program, saying he won't allow the state to go backwards on climate policy. Any delay would be a betrayal of our children's future. We are now on the razor's edge between promise and peril. Lawmakers are expected to discuss some changes to the Climate Commitment Act during their current session. However, it is highly unlikely that they would even repeal the program. That means voters would end up with the final say coming up in November. Thank you for joining us here on Krem 2 Plus for a look at some of the biggest news stories of the past week. For the most current news throughout the weekend, you can watch our latest newscast right here on Krem 2 Plus. Just look for them in the bottom navigation menu. I'm Tim Pham. Thanks for watching.